The 18th day of February, the day is finally here when, Niger when Ugandans got the opportunity to cast their ballot. Scenes of chaos in various parts of the country and ending with some rather uh, confounding news about the arrest of presidential candidate Kiza Besiger. Welcome to Bottom Line East Africa. This day that Uganda decides her fate for the next five years. I'm Yvonne Okwara Matole. We have that and much more analysis. We'll be speaking with the director of the East African Institute at the Aga Khan University, as well as a gentleman who is just from Uganda today. You don't want to miss our bulletin tonight. Let's get it started. We want to start with news that is just in in a moment. I want to begin bottom line East Africa tonight with news just in out of Uganda where opposition leader and presidential candidate for the Forum for Democratic Change FDC Dr. Kiza Besige has been arrested just a short while ago. Besige was arrested by police at a house where the opposition claims vote rigging was taking place. FDC members demanded to search the house and access was denied. Bessiger was then arrested and removed from the scene in a police vehicle. Earlier in the day, Ugandans cast their votes amid claims of some polling centers not receiving their materials on time. We'll continue to update you on that and we'll be speaking to Ben Kitili in just a short while. Now, over 15 million registered voters uh, were expected to cast their vote in the legislative and presidential election. However, the opposition claims the election was a mere sham as some of their strongholds had not received ballot material way past voting time. However, all the eight presidential candidates voted despite the reservations. Michelle Ngele now takes us through how the three main candidates cast their ballots. Voters in Uganda went to the polls this morning to vote for the country's next president in what is considered to be the most competitive election since the advent of multi-party democracy a decade ago. The presidential campaign pits incumbent Yoweri Museveni, who has ruled the country for almost three decades, against seven other candidates including his former doctor Kiza Besige and former Prime Minister Amaman Babazi. And unlike past elections, Museveni faces a stiff challenge. President Yoweri Museveni cast his vote in Kirihura in Ankole province west of Uganda. <coughs> Well, I have done my duty as a citizen. Uh, previously, I did my duty as a candidate. So, I'm a very happy person. Museveni's main challenger and former physician, Dr. Kize Besige, cast his vote in his home district of Rukungiri. <laughs> Speaking to the media, Besige accused the government of interfering with the electoral process, saying the election was not free and fair. Our defiance campaign is a resistance campaign, actually, and it is intended to make sure that the citizens regain their power in spite of all the challenges and odds that are arranged against them. Presidential candidate and former Prime Minister Amaman Babazi, who is also seen as a leading contender for the presidency, arrived in his home district of Kanungu, Western Uganda, to cast his vote. Voters began moving around the country's capital, Kampala, before dawn, making their way to local polling stations. In some areas, like the suburb of Mbuya, voting materials came on time and voters stood by to inspect the contents of the polling materials. Political tensions were, however, running high as many waited under the hot sun to vote at polling stations that at midday were still not open. This seemed to anger the crowds. <laughs> Many, however, said they would not leave until they cast their vote. Many also complained of an apparent shutdown of social media sites such as Twitter and Facebook. Some observers suspected it was to keep people from publicly gripping the late delivery of voting materials, while the opposition terms it as a means to hide electoral malfunctions. 
Many people, however, found a way around the controversial restrictions, including Mr. Mbabazi, who tweeted advice on how to do it. Incumbent Yoweri Museveni, on the other hand, was happy with the internet jam, saying that this would allow many social media addicts to vote. An opinion poll released in January showed the race tightening, with Museveni garnering 51% support, with Besige at 32% and Babazi at 12%. And while the expectation is Museveni is likely to come out on top, the question is whether he can win enough votes to avoid a runoff. To win outright, he will need 50% plus one votes. Michelle Ngele, KTN News. Okay, so we want to have some analysis now on the elections in Uganda and the latest developments now that the polls have closed. And I'm happy to be joined by, um, with rather, Alex Sowitu, who is the director of the East African Institute at the Aga Khan University here in Nairobi, Kenya. And very pleased to have you. Thank you for making all the way back from Uganda, Bishop Niringi, who's from the Uganda Governance Monitoring Platform. Thank you both. Um, I'd like to start with you, Bishop. The arrest of Kiza Besige, your reactions to that this evening? Um, consternation, I'm, I'm surprised. Um, on the other hand, I'm not surprised. It's because it's very, it's very typical to um, President Museveni. Um, uh, President Museveni is very intolerant. <laughs> he, he actually doesn't know how to compete. That's the truth. Mm. And um, I think the sentiment uh, by... Uh, the Electoral Commission chairman uh, saying that if he had powers, he would not have nominated uh, Dr. Chiza Besige. I am nearly sure that what Dr. Chiza, what the, uh, uh, Professor Badri Chigund was mm -hmm. really voicing were sentiments very, very much akin to what uh, President Museveni would. So, uh, so yes, surprising, because frankly, this is election day. Yeah. Frankly, uh, there are other ways to manage situations like mm -hmm. this. Mm -hmm. However, it's not surprising because it's really typical. All it's right. very typical to President Museveni and uh, his regime. Okay, we'll, we'll talk a little bit about uh, your experience in Uganda today because uh, you visited quite a number of polling stations um, and we'll come to that in just a moment. Alex, so this is the second time that uh, Dr. Kiza Besige is getting arrested in just as many days. The first time, at least in this week alone, yeah. was you know just a couple of days to the election mm -hmm. and now this. Uh, do you think this serves to quell tensions or you know light up the fires a little bit more i think given the uh, the mood that presided or preceded the electoral process and all of the allegations especially from uh, uh, dr besige with regard to the fairness and the fact that this was not believable by any stretch of imagination i, I think what Museveni, what the government has done today invigorates those fears mm. and makes it very difficult for anyone to believe that this was a fair process. Mm. And I think uh, the timing couldn't be more awful. All right, okay, we we're going to be getting uh, some of the footage in just a short while from our Ben Kitili, who's in Uganda, of that arrest that took place just a short while ago. Bishop, you um, went around a number of polling stations. Um, give us your first-hand experience. What did you see? What was the experience like? Um, because, you know, we've seen in certain places voting material didn't even make it, even by the time polling centers were closing this evening. <coughs> Sadly, that's correct. Um, I uh, was up and early, uh, went to the first polling station at uh, 6.30. Um, I am an accredited uh, observer under the uh, Citizens Election uh, Observation Network. Um, in my role as the uh, Citizens Manifesto Ambassador for the Uganda Governance Monitoring Platform, so, I mean, there's really no activity. So I thought, this is maybe just this one. So I quickly drove to the next one. Uh -huh. And it's like it was exactly the same story. Drove to the next one. So by seven, no activity on the five that I had visited. It was easy to visit the five. They're okay. all very close to each other. Right. So I thought, let me go to Makerere University. Okay. You know, surely things must be different. Uh -huh. They must have about 15 or so polling stations, very many halls of residence, and same story, no activity. In fact, what so surprised me even yeah. was that the instructions were not very clear. Oh I began to ask Bishop you. Bishop, when you space. say no activity, were there no electoral officials? You know, oh, just by activity, that. I mean, yeah. uh, there were some electoral officials. Uh -huh. Uh, absolutely no order. It was okay. difficult to tell right. who is a presiding officer uh -huh. and who is not okay. because they were not 
you know, in their proper uniform because they have uh, aprons mm -hmm. that they have given to them. Mm -hmm. So you couldn't tell uh, there were apparently candidate agents, but you couldn't tell who was who. Okay. There were some voters, actually. Uh -huh. uh, voters were at most of these polling stations uh, by 6.30, mm -hmm. but no activity means there was no electoral activity. There okay. wasn't. And uh, went around by 9 o'clock, I had covered about 20 uh, uh, polling stations mm -hmm. and literally only in three. But I was also very intrigued mm -hmm. by the fact that even the instructions were not clear. I did ask when I went to a polling station that was about to start uh -huh. and they actually started. And the boxes were not sealed. So I said, so how come? I asked the presiding officer, how come this is the case? And one of the uh, polling agents of President Museven said, no, they shouldn't, be, they shouldn't be sealed. They should be sealed at the end. And I said, actually, I thought that the guidelines by the Electoral Commission are the contrary. I asked, uh, what is it? What's the arrangement here when you finish polling? You know, a person casts their vote, but they want to stay right. to be able to watch, uh -huh. but also to wait for the counting. Yeah. What's the distance you can stay away from the area, yes. the cordon of area? And um, in many situations, the presiding officer would say, 100 meters. Then somebody else would say, no, 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 it's 50 meters. And then another would say, 20 meters. But I would say very kindly, but I thought the law actually says, actually the yeah. law is clear. Right. It's 20 meters. Okay, so no clear instructions and from and the I electoral officials. This is, this is terrible. Okay, you know. all right. You paint a, a very interesting picture. Alex, this is an all too common picture of elections, not just in Uganda, but in this region, in East Africa, is it? Well, you know, uh, in October last year, Tanzania went to the polls. Yeah. It was the same thing. In mm -hmm. the capital city of Dar es Salaam, it took forever to even get polling material to some of the voting, s some of the polling stations. In Kenya, it was the same thing in 2013. And now in Uganda, and, and I think what is interesting is that uh, uh, Badri Chigundu actually said uh, uh, to uh, yesterday that they didn't even have trucks to move the electoral material mm -hmm. and I, when I was talking to the bishop I said but he knew this five years ago that today February the 18th they'll be they'll be running an election and I'm sure that they had all the resources and all the contingency plans should have been built around making sure that because the election is about the polling material is about the electoral materials Absolutely. so if, if you don't have that then you don't have a, you don't have a poll then you don't have an election I'd like to talk a little bit about uh, the conduct in in your view both of you um, of the electoral commission um, so earlier today you know they were on Twitter and on social media trying to answer questions um, and you know at some point when they were being asked about uh, you know inaccessibility to the internet um, and I'll get that tweet uh, for you in just a moment they said well you know we are the electoral commission and we do not um, you know interfere or manage uh, internet communication we're only uh, you know an electoral commission that conducts and manages elections and then later on in the afternoon we get the statement from the electoral commission that in fact internet had been cut off for security reasons I mean we seem to be getting quite a bit of conflicting messages uh, talk to us about you know the role of the electoral commission should the electoral commission have been talking about cutting off the internet to begin with you know I think that <laughs> we get surprised because we expect better and I think the problem is us because Actually, now I, I realize we have a problem, mm -hmm. us, because we assume that these institutions ought to serve the purpose of the common good. So in other words, the Electoral Commission is there to serve the purpose of democracy. Do you think they've been a neutral arbiter in this process? Uh, no, no, that's what I'm telling you. The President Museveni doesn't intend them to serve that purpose. These are, these are personalized institutions. They are no longer institutions of the people. They are personal institutions. So uh, uh, Professor Chigundu knows his job. He must deliver a result for President Museven, not a result for Uganda. So when you see this flip-flopping, this inconsistency, it is, this inconsistency <laughs> is a reflection of a particular consistency. And that consistency <laughs> is we are here to work for President Museven. Uh -huh. And what President Museven says, we shall do. So the police actually today you know, when Facebook, Twitter, when mm -hmm. the internet service providers were, t you know, were directed. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and I am very sure the police officer, you know, the police knew. Yeah. But the deputy spokesperson of the police came and said publicly on uh, public media. And she said, no, it could 